Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and now we're going to discuss the management of locally advanced kidney cancer. I have the pleasure of being here with Dr. Jaime Marchand, assistant professor of medicine at the University of Miami. He had done his training at the very prestigious Harvard University prior to coming here. Thank you for coming. Thanks. All right, let's assume, again, the patient has had either blood in the urine or some sort of imaging which shows a mass in the kidney but there does not appear to be any cancer anywhere else. What happens next for that patient? So in those cases we're talking about a localized uh, kidney cancer or, or an early stage kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. the, uh, mainstay of the, the mainstay of the treatment for local uh, uh, tumors of the kidney is surgical resection. Okay? Therefore, the, the next step, once a kidney tumor is uh, deemed to be localized, is to refer the patient to a urologic surgeon mm -hmm. with experience in, uh, in kidney cancer surgery. Mm -hmm. Is there a time when you would recommend just observing the mass versus freezing it or surgically removing it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there are several factors to, uh, to consider on the decision uh, as to whether to operate or, uh, or not. Okay? The general concept and the general principle is that the only curative a strategy or the curative method uh, in kidney cancer is surgical resection. Mm -hmm. So ideally all kidney tumors that are uh, resectable should be removed. Mm. Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, in these cases, in these situations, is where a multidisciplinary approach mm. is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Discussion between the uh, urologist, the medical oncologist, and even the the nephrologist to discuss the safety, whether the patient is surgically uh, a surgical candidate or not, and depending on that, decisions are made as to whether uh, to operate versus uh, proceed with a local ablative method or observation. Okay, uh, there are some cases, for example, in which patients may have uh, medical conditions that mm -hmm. make them not good candidates. For uh, for surgery, uh, depending on the size of the tumor, mm -hmm. okay, some patients who may not be surgical candidates may uh, be candidates for local ablative therapies. In terms of observation, that is some uh, a topic of uh, intense research, uh, and uh, there's no clear uh, guidelines mm -hmm. as to what is the exact size for patients who are not surgical candidates can be followed or, or they need to act. But, but the, 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 the message from a general treatment uh, principle in kidney cancer is uh, to remove all surgical resectable tumors because that is the only method or the only way where, uh, uh, that can offer a chance for a cure. Mm -hmm. So uh, generally speaking, I will ask a urologist this as well, but when do you decide to take out part of the kidney versus the entire kidney? The, the decision to do a partial nephrectomy, which is take part of the kidney, or a radical or complete nephrectomy, which is take the whole kidney, depends mostly on the size of the tumor. Mm. Tumors that are early stages, for example, less than 7 centimeters or, or T1, uh, are, uh, uh, depending on the location, can be removed by a partial nephrectomy. Mm -hmm. okay? Tumors that are bigger, or tumors that are uh, uh, located in areas uh, that uh, make a partial nephrectomy uh, not feasible uh, should go with, with a, a complete or a radical nephrectomy. But so to answer your question, size and location is the are the cr main criteria to determine whether a patient may be a candidate for a partial nephrectomy or a radical nephrectomy. And just generally speaking, would you please talk about the different stages, at least stages one through three of kidney cancer? Mm -hmm. The uh, stages one, two, and three uh, kidney cancer. Uh, uh, those three different stages uh, are uh, determined by the size of the tumor and also by the degree of local extension. Mm -hmm. Stage one tumors are usually tumors that are less than seven centimeters mm -hmm. and are localized in the kidney. Mm -hmm. Stage two tumors are usually tumors that are uh, bigger than seven centimeters and are also localized in the kidney only. Mm -hmm. Stage three tumors, however, 
are tumors that could be less or more than seven centimeters, but have extension to to uh, neighboring tissues, for example, uh, when they extend into the renal vein or into the vena cava. Okay, those are considered stage three tumors, or uh, tumors that uh, can ex that extend outside of the renal capsule through the uh, adipose tissue to the fat tissue mm -hmm. around the kidney are also considered stage three tumors. I see. And stage four is when it's spread to other organs, but we'll talk about yes. that later. So let's go back to stage three. Assuming that sometimes a, a blood clot, a thrombus forms from the kidney that goes in the main vein, the inferior vena cava, what does that mean in terms of prognosis and for the patient? Well, uh, when a tumor of the kidney involves the, the renal vein or the vena cava, that puts a patient into a stage three tumor. Uh, another uh, category of stage three tumors that I uh, have to mention is when there is involvement of lymph nodes mm -hmm. in the area of the kidney. Those are also considered stage three tumors, independent on, on the size of the tumor. Okay, but uh, obviously a, a tumor that uh, involves the, the, the renal vein or the vena cava is a higher stage tumor, therefore it's associated with a, a, with a less good prognosis as patients with stage one and two especially in terms of uh, the, the potential or the risk for recurrence after surgery and also a, a survival. I see. Sometimes patients have tumors in both kidneys. How do you manage those? Well, that is a, a complex question and again requires a multidisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the answer as to what the best management is will depend on the location of the tumors, and also on the size of the tumors and the numbers. There are cases where patients may have isolated small renal tumors in both kidneys that could be surgical resectable, mm -hmm. amenable to partial nephrectomies, for example. Other possibilities could be a partial nephrectomy and an ablative procedure, mm -hmm. uh, depending on, on the tumors. But again, uh, the, the decision as to what the best approach is uh, for the management of uh, bilateral multicentric kidney tumors is a, a, is a multidisciplinary decision that is based on a discussion between the urologist who is the, the main driver of the discussion in these cases and the medical oncologist. I see. Now let's go back to assume you know one has only one tumor and one kidney and let's say that tumor is resected surgically. At the present time is there any chemotherapy or targeted therapy recommended afterwards? The answer is no unfortunately. There have been a large number of studies five, ten years ago trying to look at the role of immunotherapy approaches which were a, a, like more than five years ago the only treatment option for kidney cancer. A, immunotherapy approaches for the post-operative, in the post-operative setting kidney cancer to try to decrease the risk of recurrence. However, those studies have been negative. Currently, there are studies that are being performed with the new targeted agents uh, to uh, look in and investigate whether they have a role in reducing the risk of recurrence. However, those studies are ongoing and we don't have the answer, so we cannot recommend a, a, a post-operative mm -hmm. treatment, mm -hmm. radiation or chemotherapy or targeted therapies for patients with resected kidney cancer. Therefore, the national guidelines for follow-up of kidney cancer after surgery is a surveillance and, and clinical observation and not a systemic therapies at this time. And you talk, you mentioned surveillance. Let's say after a patient has had kidney cancer resected, how does the active surveillance follow afterwards? So uh, surveillance strategies depend on, on, the, uh, on who you talk to in part, okay? But in general, uh, the national guidelines recommend uh, to do a post-op uh, clinical evaluation with the urologist or the medical oncologist and uh, do a blood tests, do a physical exam, and do imaging studies mm -hmm. after surgery, probably between two months plus minus after surgery, mm -hmm. uh, to, to have a new baseline uh, imaging studies, and from then, do follow-ups every three to six months, at least for the first two years, and then a, a every year thereafter. But those, those are only guidelines, and uh, each individual patient 
depending on the type of the tumor, uh, the aggressiveness of mm -hmm. the tumor, mm -hmm. and the stage may require more uh, frequent visits mm -hmm. and more frequent uh, studies for surveillance. So there's no strict guideline where we that we can use to everybody, but each patient, depending on the characteristics of the tumor, may require a individual mm -hmm. uh, or customized uh, surveillance uh, uh, methods. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.